Hi, I'm Cliff Gleason. I'm the pastor of the Laconia Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've been here in Laconia, New Hampshire for about 12 years, but I've been a pastor for over 38 years. And I want to share something special with you today. It's my personal testimony, the story about my experience with Christ. You see, that experience has been changing over the years. And I hope by sharing with you, you'll be able to learn some things that will be valuable for you having a more important and a more fulfilling experience with Jesus. I grew up in a Christian home and went to the Baptist church when I was young and uh, learned some important things there. And then when I was in my teens, we weren't going to any particular church um, for a little while. And then we went to the Seventh-day Adventist church. And there I started finding about the importance of reading and studying the Bible. I read the Bible all the way through and then took some lessons and found to my surprise that you really can understand this, what people think of as an ancient book. So I began to look at it and examine it. I heard the sermons, of course, when I was at church and we went to a uh, Bible study class for young people at church. And I was learning more and more but the emphasis at that time seemed to be more on how to perform, how to serve God, how to obey Him and His commandments. And uh, there were certain good aspects of that because I avoided a lot of problems by, by obeying God. Um, didn't get into some of the mischief other young people get into and therefore didn't get into the, some of the trouble and some of the heartache that, that accompanies those things. But it wasn't until I was about 18 that I found out that Jesus didn't just die for the whole world. He didn't just die for all sinners. But he died for me. He had me in mind. That God has that ability to see each one of us. Uh, like some have said, God doesn't love us all. He loves us each. He, he looked at me. He thought of me even ahead of time. And when he died on the cross, he had me in mind. He had my sins in mind, that he was dying for them, covering for them. And so I began to sense that God had a more personal experience in mind for me. And I started to learn a little bit about what it meant to think about and meditate upon the life of Jesus uh, day by day. Take some quiet time to, to do that and to pray. And, uh, and so I did that uh, to a certain extent for a while. And then as I was going through college, I began to take less time for that. And it wasn't too long until it wasn't a habit anymore. It wasn't part of my life. Uh, and I still wanted to serve God and obey Him and felt called into ministry to be a pastor. Uh, and the Lord uh, led and he blessed and he sent me to college, to seminary, to being an intern pastor. And I can look back and see how he led step by step in those things. But as I began the work of a pastor, I made a big mistake. And that was that I, had, I, I felt that I had to do so much work and spend so much time on the work that the Lord had for me that I had no time for the Lord who gave me that work. Now, that was a big mistake. And I didn't know how to get into it. I was still rather focused on a performance and what I had to do and all that needed to be accomplished. Um, and so the efforts to seek that personal walk with the Lord, to have that time of, of connecting with Him, that took a far, far back seat in my experience. And so I had uh, a lot of defeat in my experience. I had uh, a lot of hurt that was going on in my own heart and, and in my family as I wasn't uh, allowing Jesus to live in me for them. And it wasn't the best experience. And it certainly wasn't the best example to the people. Even though I was preaching about walking with the Lord, I wasn't walking with Him myself. 
and I didn't really know how to get into that that uh, experience of really being heart to heart with the Savior, of abiding in Christ, as Jesus says there in John 13. And so I, I kind of kept wandering through life. Uh, and I don't want to say it was a bad experience because as a pastor I was learning things and I was um, serving the Lord and finding joy in, in serving others under His leadership. But it wasn't complete, not, not at all. Um, it wasn't as real and as fulfilling uh, as it could have been, it should have been. And it was the Lord Himself who put together a series of things that I surrendered to. And He brought me into the personal and loving experience that He wanted me to have. The first step was someone gave me a new version of the Bible. It was a New Testament and Psalms uh, book uh, of the contemporary English version uh, done up by the American Bible Society. Now this new version um, was done not only to make it easy to read but also to uh, to make it easy to understand and um, and I found it to be really helpful as I be, as I got into it uh, the Lord led me to something that had never been a blessing to me before and that was the Psalms. Uh, of course the Psalms is poetry and I was not comfortable with poetry. Uh, it didn't do anything for me. But here in the contemporary English version, this, this newer version, it didn't seem like poetry. Instead it seemed like, like people were opening up themselves to God and they were listening when God was opening up Himself to them. And the Holy Spirit captured my imagination and my emotions. I started to have feelings toward God rather than just thoughts and, or just concepts and facts. And there in the Psalms I realized that God wanted to reach my heart more than my head. The head part is important, but the heart part, that's where it's really at. And so I read there about people being angry with God and frustrated that things weren't going their way. I read of people who were joyful because the Lord had delivered them out of troubles and difficulties. I read of people being confused that, that they weren't having good things in their lives while they were trying to follow God, while other people who were far from God were having all kinds of what seemed to be good things happening in their lives. So I read of all these different feelings and thoughts and and people were just being really, the writers were being really honest with God. And so I started to try to be more honest with God in my prayer with Him. And to talk more about my feelings. And to start to, start to talk to God about Himself. Another thing that happened was somebody shared uh, about praying the Bible to God. In other words, taking a passage of Scripture and reading a, just a short portion and then talking to God about that particular portion of Scripture. This helped me to really get prayer as a conversation where God was talking to me through the Bible and I was talking to Him about what He had just said to me. And it would go back and forth. Sometimes I would spend 20 minutes praying about just a, a, a little half of a verse. And all oh, that became rich and became meaningful so that I wanted to have time with God. I didn't want to let it go by the wayside. I didn't want it to be down, far down on the list of priorities. I was drawn into wanting every morning the first thing is to talk with the Lord. And one phrase particularly helped me. I found it in Psalm 139, verse 18, where it says in the contemporary English version, when I awake, I find you nearby. And I think it was the Holy Spirit gave me the picture of those words that here's a loving parent who gets up early before the child does, 
we'll say it's a son, and the the father is up early, and he goes into the bedroom of the son while he's still sleeping, and he gently sits down on the edge of the bed, waiting for the son to open his eyes for the first time that morning, waiting there because he wants to give that son an expression of love, a hug, or or whatever, an expression of love to be the first experience of the day. For that son to be reminded how much he is cared for, how much he's loved. And so I felt that every morning that was God's promise that he was going to be there because he loved me and he wanted me to know for sure that he loved me. And then there are other expressions in uh, there in the Psalms. Uh, there's one about how in the morning I, all I want is to see you as you really are. In other words, to see God as he really is. Another place says, oh, in the morning, I want to learn more of your love. And another place, in the morning, I want your love to satisfy all my needs. And so these expressions kept, captured me and captured my heart that that morning, that special alone time with God, where it was quiet and it was just him and me, that was a time for me to grasp his love anew. And that was the thing I needed. Sure, we need to learn about lessons of life and we need to learn facts and we need to learn the historical things of what God did for others. But I needed to know that God loved me continually and that every day I could be all wrapped up in how good He was to me, how loving He is to me. And I could go forth with that assurance. Now something else happened, and that is somebody shared with me from Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 18. It says, your walls will be called salvation and your gates praise. So the concept there is that we can have salvation in God. That he provides salvation. We're safe with him and the salvation he provides. Just like walls around an ancient city would protect the people inside. But to get inside the walls of salvation, you have to go through the gates. And the gates are praise. So if I want my day to be filled with the assurance that God is saving me, that I have, I have eternal life because I have the Son, I need to go through the walls of praise. I need to experience praise. I need to share praise with God in my prayer. And so I began to realize that praise was the most important thing in my prayer time. It wasn't just an added thing. It wasn't just part of it. It was the most important thing in my prayer time and through the day as well. Because as we go about our day, we can see things to praise God for. Not just to thank Him for, but to praise Him for. And so I began to add more praise into my prayer. I enjoyed praying for other people. That was helpful, rather than just praying for myself. But then I found that I used to pray about my weaknesses, my sins, and I would confess them, and I would ask God to cleanse me from those sins and to, to help me to be a better person and to please let me not get involved in that and let me have a stronger will. And, let me, and, and the focus of my prayer was all about me my weak, sinful, falling self. Now the Bible says that the one that we behold, we become like. So in my prayer time, I was beholding me, so who was I becoming more like? I was becoming more like my weak, sinful self. But when I started to add more praise and be, begin to see that everything in prayer can be a springboard to praise, and I was talking to God about how great He was, how forgiving He was, how perfect and pure and righteous and good and honest and kind and all the beautiful characteristics of God. Now, I am automatically becoming more like Him as the Holy Spirit applies that principle in my life. The one we behold is the one that we're transformed into the same likeness. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. So when we trust God but then praise Him, great things begin to happen. And so now in my experience I have found 
a true joy, a true peace. I found a sense of wonder because every day it's, it is reinforced that God is good. That's number one. God is so very good. Good in his power and authority and the way he governs. Good in his tenderness and his compassion and the way he heals and forgives and saves. God is good and he's always for me. He always wants the best for me. He's always ready to help me. Not to condemn. Not to criticize. Not Certainly not to reject me. But to accept and love and heal me. And so... I find that joy and that peace in that. And then it spurs me to look for even more things to praise Him for, whether it's things in nature, certainly th other things in the Bible, things in, in Christian music, and then things that I see in my life and the life of other Christians around me. I look and I see God at work. And the more I take time to savor that, to savor His qualities, His characteristics, his amazing love, seen in so many ways. As I stop and smell the roses of his beauty, it just fills me with a whole new experience, a whole new appreciation for him, a whole new joy, a wonder at how great our God is. And I tell you, that's the best way to live to be all wrapped up in His goodness. You know, I used to think of the robe of Christ's righteousness. The Bible talks about that, you know. And and I thought about it as something that covers me up and hides the, the soiled sin of my life. And so it just covers me up and hides that. But, but I thought there's more to it than that. You know, when I put on a nice thick robe, I often do so to be all comfortable and to be all wrapped up in its warmth and softness. And I thought about it. What is it about the righteousness of Christ that's important to me anyway? It's not just that he forgives my sins and has eternal life for me eventually. But every day he is righteous in how he treats me. He is so good and so gracious every moment. And so in that quiet morning time with the Lord, I am putting on his robe. I'm getting all wrapped up in how good he is. And that can take me right through the day. That can help me have a whole new mindset. That I'm not focused on temptation and sin and trouble and difficulty. But I'm focused on his greatness and his goodness, his love and his mercy. And I go about my day in wonder of how great and marvelous is my God, my Creator, my Savior, my coming King. And I just can't wait for that eternity to start when He'll take us on adventures beyond our imagination. And we will enjoy Him and He will enjoy us because He's doing it already. And we are too. This is the experience you can have. God has this in mind for each of us. May God bless you as you hear his voice, as you let him lead you in the kind of alone experience with God that will, that will be just right for you, that will speak to your heart and win your heart to him. I hope that as you have thought about uh, my story, you'll see that this is something that you would like to have. And as a pastor, I would like to be able to assist you with that. You have on the screen my phone number and my uh, contact information through email. And I answer both of those. So feel free to contact me if you have some questions if you need some assistance. There are lots of questions that come up with these, uh, this kind of a, an experience in life. And uh, questions about the Bible, questions about God, questions about how this can happen for you. So please contact me, whichever way works for you, phone, email. 
And I would love to talk with you, maybe sit down with you and share with you. And we could talk and pray together and maybe even study the Bible some. And we can uh, approach these things. We can seek answers that will that will really mean something to you. So I would be glad to be a resource for you. Please contact me. And so may God bless you. And I hope that I will be talking to you and, and maybe even meeting you in person sometime real soon. God bless you, Richard.